Hey, this is Charles with Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Today I'm gonna to show you how to diagnose a bad fuel pump on a Polaris Razor. The fuel pump is a key component to help your engine run correctly. If it goes bad, you're gonna have some problems. Now, some symptoms of a bad fuel pump are gonna be poor acceleration, you're gonna have a bog or cutout from mid to high RPM, or your engine might not even start. Now, all of these symptoms can be caused by other things, but the fuel pump is a fairly common problem with these razors. So we're gonna show you how to diagnose your fuel pump to find out if it's the culprit. Now, the procedures we're gonna show you, they're gonna be similar for most razors. There are a few differences in connectors, so make sure you follow your model-specific service manual. And we're gonna show you how to do this on a 2014 Polaris Razor XP1000. To do this job, we have a fuel pressure tester. You don't have to have this one to diagnose the problem, but this is one of the best indicators. We have some replacement fuel line, a digital multimeter, a couple paper clips, rags, safety glasses, some rubber gloves, contact cleaner, and you'll need something to measure with. This ratio right measures in cc's, or you can use something that measures in milliliter. The first thing we need to do is make sure we have power going down to the fuel pump. To do that, we'll turn the ignition key to the run position and you'll hear the fuel pump cycle for two to three seconds, then shut off. If it doesn't do this, you know you have an issue with the electrical system and we'll show you how to address that later in the video. Our machine, we did have power going to the fuel pump. It did cycle and shut off, so we'll proceed to the next steps. To gain access to the fuel pump, We'll remove the passenger seat. If you have a four-seater, you'll remove the passenger side rear seat. With the seat removed, we can now do the fuel flow rate test. What this test does is make sure you have enough fuel that's able to flow through the fuel pump into the fuel rail. And this test is a really good indicator if you have any issues with your fuel pump. To do this test, you'll need to locate your fuel pump, which is directly under the seat we just removed. And then you'll remove this fuel line right here to do that, this green connector has two tabs on each side. You'll need to pop those tabs out and then move the green connector back. And once you've done that, it's a good idea to put a shop towel around here. This thing can be pressurized. We wanna catch any fuel in that. Now we'll take our extra piece of fuel line. We'll install one end to the fitting coming from the fuel pump and then route the other end into our ratio right. Now with this test, the main thing you're looking for is a strong stream coming out of the fuel line. If it just kind of drizzles, then you know you have an issue. But if you want to get a little more technical, our manual, it doesn't give us a spec for milliliters per key cycle, but it does tell us that it's 25 liters per hour minimum that this pump should be putting out. So we calculated that out. That comes to about seven milliliters per second. So we're gonna run our key cycle three different times and we should be about 60 milliliters minimum, but a properly functioning pump should be well above that amount. The reason we're doing three key cycles is that our ratio right starts at 50 milliliters and we're expecting a minimum of 20 milliliters per key cycle. So we wanna make sure we're getting enough fuel pumped up in here to get an accurate measurement. To do a key cycle, hold the hose up to the ratio right, and then you'll turn the key on into the run position. Let the fuel pump cycle until it stops, and then you'll turn the key off. You'll repeat this process as many times as you need. As you can see, we had a nice solid stream going into this ratio right, and we are almost at 250 milliliters, so we are well above the minimum spec. The fuel flow test that we just did will help you catch a lot of the common problems with these fuel pumps, but if that checked okay and you still think there might be issues with the fuel pump, then you want to move on to the fuel pressure test. And to do that, we have our fuel pressure tester. We just source this through our dealership and your local dealer is the best place to get one of these. So we'll go ahead and show you how to get this hooked up. Now we'll disconnect the hose from our last test and we'll hook up our fuel pressure tester and we'll first put it into our fuel line and then we'll snap it down onto the pump. And 
And I'm gonna make sure this green clip is snapped all the way down. Now we'll take our ratio right. I'm gonna take the clear hose and just set that in there for now. This is gonna be for when we bleed the pressure from this gauge. And now we'll turn the key on into the run position and take the reading from our gauge. To release the pressure in the fuel pressure gauge, you'll unscrew this valve right here. Some of them have a button, but you wanna do that before you disconnect the gauge. After that, we'll go ahead, disconnect the gauge and reconnect our fuel line. Since our machine is actually within spec, the spec on this machine is 58 PSI plus or minus two, but always make sure you refer to the, to the spec for your specific model. Now, if your fuel pump failed either of these last two tests, we do sell aftermarket rebuild kits as well as complete assemblies. We also sell the OEM fuel pump if that's what you want. Now, going back to the beginning, for those of you that had a fuel pump that didn't even cycle, we're gonna test that now. And how we do that, we're gonna check for power coming down to it. This is where you're gonna need your paper clips and digital multimeter. Now this is the connector that's giving power to our fuel pump. This red wire with the blue tracer, this is our number three terminal. And just to the side of it, this brown wire is the number four terminal. We're gonna back probe those two wires to check for power. And the reason why we're back probing them is we don't want to put our tester on the front side of the connector because it could damage it. And all back probing is, we're going to stick these paper clips in the back and it's going to touch the metal connector from the back side. So to get these paper clips in, I'm going to disconnect the connector by pulling up on that tab. And then just very carefully, I'll slide these paper clips all the way down. And there's a rubber seal in the back you want to make sure you're pushing all the way through down to get a good connection. Now as you get both of these installed, make sure that they don't touch each other. So what I'm going to do now, I'll turn the meter to DC voltage. And when we put the, the meter leads to the paper clips and turn the key on into the run position, we're looking for a minimum of 7 volts and a maximum of 14 volts. So we measured 12 and a half volts for a couple of seconds and then it went back down to zero. That's exactly what you want. If you don't see this voltage there, then you wanna check your power and ground wire and a good place to start is at the fuse box. Now that we've checked for power coming down to the fuel pump, we'll wanna check for continuity throughout the fuel pump. And this is a good idea to do whether or not you had power coming down to it. And that way you know for sure that the wiring in the fuel pump is good or bad. To do that, we'll hook the meter leads to the number three and number four terminals on the fuel pump. And we'll measure that by switching the meter to the ohm position. As you can see for us, we've got two ohms. That's looking pretty good. If you had a high resistance reading, like in the mega ohms or something like that, then you know you definitely have an issue. So our next test is for any of you guys that have issues with your fuel gauge reading inaccurately on the dash, we can check the sending unit. The easiest way to do that is to remove the fuel pump from the machine. So to do that, we've already got our electrical connector disconnected. Then we'll go ahead and disconnect our fuel line. Now to get these caps loose, Polaris does have a special tool to do that. We realize a lot of you guys probably aren't gonna have that special tool. So something else that can work is one of these adjustable oil filter wrenches. If you do do it this way, you'll need to be really careful and we'll push on these tabs with this side and this other side will be pulling on that other side of the tab. Now, before you remove the fuel pump, we tried to clean this up as best as possible before we disconnected anything. But when you pull this off, it's a good idea to try to wipe up any loose dirt before you pull it the rest of the way out. You wanna keep anything from spilling down into the tank. Now we can just lift the fuel pump up. And when we do that, we also have this float right here. And to get them out, you just rock 
the fuel pump back and it pulls right out. So we're going to go ahead and take this over to the bench to test it. So how the sending unit works is this float arm goes up and down depending on the level of fuel you have in the gas tank and it varies the signal through these wires up to your gauge. So what we're going to do is measure the resistance through these wires as the gauge moves up and down and we want the resistance changes to be smooth throughout the entire range. The resistance with a full tank will be around 100 ohms and the resistance with an empty tank will be around 450 ohms. To check the sending unit, we'll have our multimeter in the ohms position. We'll take the meter leads and we'll hook them to the number one and number two connectors of our fuel pump. And as those are connected, we'll lift the float arm up and down as we monitor the ohms readings. So we're at 450 ohms at the bottom. We'll just make sure there's a smooth transfer all the way to 100 ohms. And that completes the test for our fuel pump assembly. If it didn't pass the sending unit test, you'll need to replace the entire assembly. We do have options available for that on our website. Now, if the fuel pump passed all of the tests, then you'll want to check elsewhere for your problems like the mechanical system or electrical system. There's a few things I want to show you on reinstalling this fuel pump. So let's get back into the machine and get this installed. Before you put the fuel pump in, it's a good idea to look down into the tank and check for any sand or mud that's in the bottom. If there's anything down in there, you'll want to take the tank out and flush it out. So at this point, ours looks pretty good. So I'm just going to clean the ceiling surface, both on the tank and on this pump. And then Polaris recommends replacing the plastic nut and this gasket anytime the fuel pump is out. So we actually have this all balls option available on our website. Now we'll go ahead and install the gasket onto the fuel pump. And then we'll set this down into place. And we'll just rock it into place just like we took it out. Now this thing is spring loaded. So when you put it in, we're going to line this arrow right here with the two marks down on the tank. We'll put that right in between. And then we're going to press this down into place. And that's going to let us get this plastic nut screwed on into place. So I've got this nut as tight as I can by hand. I'm going to go ahead and use these oil filter pliers again to tighten it down the rest of the way. Just for a rough idea, if you do use the special tool, Polaris wants you to torque this down to 70 foot-pounds. Also before and after doing the final torquing, you want to make sure you're still aligned with the marks on the gas tank. Now we can reinstall the fuel line, electrical connector, and reinstall the passenger seat. And that's all there is to diagnosing problems with your fuel pump. If you need to replace your fuel pump, we have a video on how to do that. So be sure to check it out. We also have a ton of other helpful videos on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. And if you need parts, we have both OEM and aftermarket parts available on our website. Thanks for watching.